saved. Amen? And if you're not saved, you can get saved this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to just ask Jesus into your heart. Amen? Hallelujah. God is
Then he said in 24, Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. We preach those, we teach those, we endeavor to live those. We got the book spotlights, words this week, I think last week, and, and then before you can have what you say. All of those are good, all of those are true. All of those are right. Amen. But there's more to it than that. Let's keep reading. He said in verse 25, when you stand praying, what do you say? Forgive if you have all against any, that your father, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespass. I was working over 20 plus years ago. I was working at Blumenthal here. There used to be a textile mill in Marion. I was working uh, as a supervisor. And, well, no, I wasn't a supervisor at that time. I think I was just a foreman. But either way, uh, I was working as a foreman. I started out as a material handler and moved up. I had a guy over me that was a superintendent, making a long story short for purpose of somebody here. But, but I, I, was, I was believing God daily. I was standing on Mark 11, 23 and 24 every day on my way to work. I confessed, I thank you, Father, I have promotion. I thank you, Father, I'm a first shift supervisor and many other confessions, but that was part of it. I believe God daily. If anybody would have come to me and said, you're not trusting God, you're not in faith, I might not would have said it to them because I don't try to attack people, but I would have said to myself, that individual's lying. They don't know what they're talking about. I know that I believe I receive. I know that I'm going to have what I say. I know that God is mine in Jesus' name. During the time I had this confession, this individual that was over me, even though I believed 100% that I was in faith, many of you heard this story, and I'm going to tell the whole thing, but this individual that was over me, just proof, it proved out over time anyways, he was corrupt. And he did a lot of things, he was my direct report. He did a lot of things that were wrong, put me in a lot of situations that were wrong, and it caused me to be bitter towards him. Other people would come around me. I knew he was corrupt. Even my friends and different people would come around me. And they would all be talking about, you know, so-and-so. He, he needs to be fired. And, of course, I just listened at first. And he's a sorry rascal and all this kind of stuff. And after a while, because it was true, I started agreeing with him. Agreeing with them. I said, yeah, he is sorry. Yeah, he does need to be fired. The sooner the better. He's crooked. He's corrupt. You say all those things are true? Yeah, but what business of that was it of mine? And I kept saying those things and doing those things and riding to work every day and nothing was taking place as it should. Now, if you're in faith and your heart's right, you just stay in faith and keep going. For walk by faith, not by sight. But the Lord spoke to me one day. And he called the fellow's name. He said, as long as your heart is the way it is towards so-and-so, he said, you're never going to receive that promotion that you're believing for. He said, you're never going to receive it. He said, you can have what you say. I thought you can have what you say. I thought your words were important. Yeah, they're important on more than just one side, though. Right? If you're going to see good days and have a good life, you're going to have to keep your tongue. you got to watch your mouth. You have to set a watch over your mouth. This individual was wrong. He was corrupt. All of those things. But that wasn't my place. Even the Bible says, Dr. Hagen used it frequently. He said, who are you to judge another man's servant? That's what the Holy Spirit told Dr. Hagen. This is the Bible as well. But he said, who are you to judge another man's servant? And the Lord said, as long as your heart is like that towards that individual, you'll not receive what you're believing me for. Galatians 5, 6. You know this. You know this. We've heard it numerous times. Galatians 5, 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by, you say, I'm, 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 I'm in faith that I know I am. I know I don't speak doubt and unbelief. I know I'm speaking abundant supply. I'm speaking blessing. I'm speaking promotion. I'm speaking deliverance. I'm speaking freedom. I'm speaking all of these things. Faith which worketh by, how good is your car if you've got the nicest car in the parking lot and, and it runs off of, of unleaded fuel? And how, how good, how much benefit is your car to you today, even if you got the nicest one out here, which I don't know who does, nor do I care, but if you got the nicest one out here and you don't have one drop of gas in it, how much benefit is it to you? None. Why? Because where is it going to take you? It may have the ability to do all sorts of things. You might have a little bit of benefit because some things run temporarily off the battery, but after a while, even the battery will die. If you don't run it because the automator won't charge the battery up or keep it charged, right? But the Lord told me, he said, as long as your attitude is like it is toward that other person. He said, you'll not receive promotion. And he said, this is how I want you to start praying. He said, I want you to pray that he gets a promotion. I said, God, he needs to be fired. 
He's sorry and you know it. He said, I want you to pray that he gets a promotion. I want you to pray because they got up to the VP status there and they got a company car. He said, I want you to pray that he gets a company car. <laughs> Believe God for promotion. Pray for it. <clears throat> what are you supposed to do for your enemies? You're supposed to pray for them. Say, you got enemies? Yeah, I got enemies. You might be deceived if you think you don't. If you live for God, you got people that don't like you. You got people that don't agree with you. You got people that do all manner of evil against you. But Jesus told us what to do. Right? You say, why are you saying this? This isn't my message about the Holy Ghost. The Lord wanted me to tell somebody this this morning. Because you say, well, I'm doing this faith message and it don't work. He said, the faith part ain't your problem. Even at the house. You say, well, I've been praying for all these things about my family. You walking in the love of God at your house? How do you treat your husband and your wife? Chris here, he probably don't even remember this. He remember sharing it. But I never said that to him about it. You have a preacher running around doing all kinds of revivals. If that's what they're supposed to do, good. You got people flocking to the tents, flocking everywhere to hear because they get up here and they're running, dancing, shouting, and screaming, and they're charismatic, and everybody wants to follow. Chris shared something a long time ago, several months ago, maybe a year. Lester Summerall was preaching. He probably remember this. Lester Summerall was preaching, and he started talking. He said, I don't care how big your tent is. I don't care how many people you get to come to your meeting. I don't care how many people like you. He said, for I follow a man, I don't know how he treats his wife. I don't know how he treats his children. He said, I, you don't qualify me to follow you just because you can get up there and act a certain way. Just because you can fool everybody. Amen? Because Amen? Yeah. that's where the rubber meets the road. But I began to pray this way for that man. And I, and, and I prayed that way. And you say, what happened? God actually used that man when I got my heart right to promote me. He used that fellow that was doing me wrong to promote me. I got a raise. I got a promotion. I got first shift. He said, well, did he get a promotion? Did he get a company card? He got fired. God, God wasn't trying to get me to get him a promotion. He was letting me know it didn't matter what that guy did. I was responsible for my heart. It doesn't matter what anybody else is saying or doing to you. You're responsible for your heart. People may say all sorts of things. Trust me, they do it to us all the time. I don't even say a word. We just keep on going. Amen? He said, why did you need to say that? Because listen, if you're not walking in the love of God, and this actually has something to do with somebody's house, your home. I told you this by the Spirit of God the last few weeks. If you don't have a happy home where the love of God prevails, and the peace of God is there, nobody's responsible but you. And the Lord said that you're upset and frustrated because you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and believing and it don't work. Faith works by love. It doesn't work by bitterness. It doesn't work by offense. It doesn't work by strife. Amen. It doesn't work because you think your wife's a pain in the rear end. Or you think your husband's a pain. Right? So oh, this is what they are and this one, that one, or the other. What are you? Amen. When you get to heaven, you're going to answer for you. I'm going to answer for me. Amen. That better be who you are focused on. Amen? It was going to be my text, and I don't know when I ever get there, but in John chapter 8, you remember the scribes and the Pharisees took the woman that was in the middle of adultery. The very act. And of course they wanted to catch Jesus and all these kind of things because of what the law said about one taking an adultery. And they wanted to take her sin and put her right in the... They didn't want to. They did it. They put her right in the middle of everybody. Right facing Jesus. The Bible talks about rejoicing in iniquity. A lot of people feel good about their sins because they compare themselves to people they think are greater sinners than they are. The Bible's your standard. Amen. It doesn't matter if you can find somebody else that you think is worse than you or maybe in sin worse than you. That's not the mirror that you look in. God, this is unpopular today, but God does not reward disobedience. He doesn't. Amen? He rewards obedience. And you say, well, if you're not supposed to say this, that, or the other, or tell anybody whether they're in or out of love, listen, I'm operating in the office of a pastor. I don't go around and get in everybody's business. Right now, this is different. I'm operating as your pastor, your teacher, in an office that I've been given authority and responsibility in. To pray and listen to God and deliver the message. You know what you do with this up to you. But faith works by love. But people will come out and maybe be good Christians, dress just right on Sunday, but God's not just compared. I mean, just concerned with how you look this morning and what you make everybody else think this morning so you can deceive your own self that way. See, I go to church and nobody else knows this, that, or the other. That's great. 
And it's true, God still loves you anyways, but you can hinder your prayers. Amen. And the Lord said, somebody's extremely frustrated at Him and in life. But the only person you need to be frustrated with is you. Because faith works by love. You can't even get mad at the devil. He's defeated. If he is taking control in your life, it's only because you let him. We've been, at this church, you know, in line with the word, we've been given authority over all the power of the devil. And we know that we can submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil and he'll flee. He can't do what he wants to do. Amen? So y'all want to get started. Let's get started. That won't cost you no extra. <clears throat> I got promoted. The other fellow got fired. But I had to get my heart right before there was promotion. And you had to be right too. Yeah. And you'll have people all the time say, you don't do this, you don't do that, you do this wrong. you got to know what you and God. What did Paul say in Acts 24? What is it, 16? Isn't that right? Y'all don't know? Well, I'm going to double check. <laughs> Yeah. Paul said in Acts 24, 16, he said, and, there, and herein do I exercise myself to always, to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. One thing that's prominent, as I tell you all the time, in the body of Christ, you, you are hard pressed to find somebody that's not offended. You, you, you can't, you'll never get a prayer answered while you're offended. That's sin. Never. If you're offended, there's no purpose in praying the prayer of faith. Because you cannot believe God for anything if you're offended. And I may can't control what people do to me, but I can control my reaction. I make the decisions for my own life. Just like you do, right? But he said, my conscience is void of offense toward God and toward men. The title of my message, which will last longer than today, is very, very important. And this is now, I wouldn't say it's weird, it's just different for me. Instead of like a vision or a dream, it's been kind of an ongoing thing that I have been seeing, and it's going to come out of John chapter 8. Let's, let's read that before we get started, or as we get started. And the title is going to be this, Keep Your Rocks in Your Pocket. You know what that means in a minute. Keep your rocks in your pocket. What they want to do with this woman in John 8. I've just noticed by observation, of course, the Holy Ghost showing it to me. Mostly everybody knows what everybody else should do. Mostly everybody knows where everybody else is wrong. But I'm called primarily, first and foremost, to examine my own walk with God. I'm not called to examine everybody else. That's not my responsibility. Right? Because the reality of it is, only you and God know your heart anyways. John chapter 8, we're going to kind of use this as a text. Don't know how much I'll expound this morning, but John chapter 8, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again into the temple. All the people came unto him. He sat down and taught them. Jesus in the temple teaching, right? Doing what he's been doing. Verse 3, the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him the scribes we know. They were the ones that kept up and recorded and made sure every if and thee, but whatever was right in the law. So they knew it. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, what did they do? They took this woman that was in sin and put her right in the center. Right? You don't know people like to do that, do you? Y'all don't be quiet. It'll be alright. Somebody get it. Miss Laura, they'd be screaming. Y'all think the Holy Ghost got her? There's a lizard up there. It could, could be a snake. I'm just proud she acted that calm. She, you say, well, she might not have should have said nothing. She was very repressed because she's going with you. You come unglued. I always tell her if somebody else comes up and tries to get her somewhere in the parking lot or something, they're going to die of a heart attack. <laughs> I'm not scared scare sometimes, and she'll just stop and just close her eyes and start screaming. I almost had one myself. <laughs> so she did get proud of her. But they, they took this woman that was caught in the act of adultery and put her right up in the midst. Verse 4. They say unto him, Master. 
this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. It wasn't a question of whether she was in sin or not. They caught her in the very act. Even if you study the commentary, study out everything you want to, really nobody disputes that. She was wrong. She was caught in the act of adultery. Kind of does make you wonder where the fellow was at. It's all right, whatever he does, right? Kind of flip around now, it's all right, what all the women do, not the men. Yeah, y'all amen and y'all don't have the, the feminist movement. Amen. <laughs> I, I never fell for all that stuff to begin with because I got a Bible that I read. Amen. But a lot of the ladies today standing up and some of these ones taking the positions and telling all the guys, we want you to leave. We want you to be our government. We want you to be all these things. Why aren't you doing it? And I'm thinking to myself, my God, for 20 years you were telling me to sit down and shut up. You finally did what you said. Now you don't want it. <laughs> you know, you can get what you want. Realize it ain't what you really want. Yeah. 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 You got to be careful about things. Renew your mind with the Word. Yeah. Amen. Moses in the law commanded us, saying, commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? They tried to trip him up. We're going to get more into this later, but not right now. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now, I, this is the vision that I actually have concerning the majority of the body of Christ. I believe we have an opportunity to write some things. Not just by faith, but by love in the body. And the way we want to love is like Jesus. Amen. People came into his life. People walked out of his life. People worshipped him and followed him. People did him wrong. They crucified him. But it never changed who he was. Amen. He wasn't moved by people what they did one way or the other. He was moved with compassion to help people. But we remember, we won't go there now, I don't think. But we remember he knew Judas was the one that was going to betray him. And the very next thing he did, I believe, was get on his knees and wash all of their feet. And that didn't save Judas. He still went and did what he did and died and went to hell. But Jesus was not moved even by a traitor and a betrayer. He was still Jesus. You don't have to be moved by everything that's going on around you. You don't have to be moved. And if you see this, it's very <coughs> preeminent now. It's what most people are talking about is what they've come through, what they've been through, what people are saying about them, what people are doing to them. Even, let's get off on the politics, what the president's doing, what the vice president's doing, what this party's doing, what everybody's doing. Jesus wants to know, what are you doing? And I believe, and as I say, there's more to it than this, but they, are, they brought this woman up here, tempting Jesus, put her right in the middle, but Jesus stooped and he said, what do you got to say about this? He stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Another revelation. You don't have to answer everything. The Bible says even Jesus said, answer not a word. He say, so and so said this, that, and the other. What do you got to say about it? Nothing. He say, what's your opinion? Nothing. I don't form one. I don't have to. That's between them and God. You say, oh, they're wrong. Well, he's a judge, not me. Just, I just leave him alone. Let him take care of it. Right? Jesus stooped down with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them. What did he tell them? Man, that's good stuff. It's not popular today. We want a revival, you know. He that is without sin among you. So they brought this woman and said, she's in the very act of adultery. And at first, he just basically ignored them. Give them a little bit of time maybe to think, but of course, they're not thinking that way. Especially the scribes and the Pharisees. But he that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. That's where the title came from. Keep your rocks in your body. He said, go ahead, stone her. You, the first one that needs to throw the rock is the one that's perfect. You that, had, that your life is perfect, you hadn't missed it. You have no sin. Go ahead and stone her. Now you can look at her. You can look at him, Jesus. You can look at them and you know, I say all the blood run out of their face. It might have run in it. They might have been pale white or blood red. Either way, he got their attention. Right? He said, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. I'm going to tell you something. If you get a hold of what we're going to be teaching you, it'll change your life forever. Right? Yeah. So how do you know? Number one is the word. Number two, been practicing it for many years now. It's of great benefit. 
You say people say all kind of stuff. I don't care. Say so people do all kind of stuff, and people make even right now. People's got other people thinking all kind of stuff about you. I don't care. Say so what do you got to say about it? Nothing. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. I don't say it. I, they say, well, he mistreats me and he does this and he don't love me. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. I cast my cares upon the Lord. It's all, it's all not true. And I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. It don't matter what everybody says. I'm not who people say I am. Neither are you people. You're not who somebody says you are. So and so says this. That or the other does all sorts of things. Right? And you'll find out today a lot of people love you until you do what they don't want you to do. Then they'll love you no more. You, you up here on the pinnacle until you do what they don't want you to do. Then things change. But you shouldn't change. Because ultimately, who do you serve? Who's your allegiance to? Amen? Amen. Your allegiance is to God. It's not the man. Not primary. Right? He that is without sin, among you let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience... Went out one by one. Good country talk, they felt like a bunch of dummies for what they've done. Right? Yeah. One by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Where'd they go? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Now, he didn't say, Go sin. He said, And go and sin no more. Right? He didn't condone the sin, but he did address an even greater issue of what the scribes and the Pharisees were doing. We're going to keep our rocks in our pocket. We're going to walk in the love of God. Now, I'll say this. Be careful. We're going to cover some things by the Spirit of God in the Word. Most Christians do not know. And you say, We say that often. I do, but only say as the Lord tells me to. It is a point of frustration to me sometimes. But it seems like almost all of the body of Christ doesn't walk in the love of God, number one, because they don't know what it is. They have not, you can't walk in any right authority or privilege that you don't know you possess. Right? you got to know what the Word says. So we're talking about keep your rocks in your pocket. And, and this, this came from, because I see it, I'm not ministering what I see. I'd have ministered a long time ago if the Lord, if it wasn't the Holy Ghost. If, if it was me, I'd have done it a long time ago. But you have to be careful in the world that we're living in now. Because what is happening to many Christians, Daddy used to say, you'll either get bitter or better. And what's happening to many Christians, because the Bible is being fulfilled, many Christians are caught unaware, seemingly anyways, and, and if you're not careful, you will become hard. And the Bible says, harden not your hearts. You become hard. Matter of fact, as far as people, you won't believe in anybody. You think everybody is fake. Everybody is false. Nobody's good, of course, except for you. Right? But that's why I said I didn't know if I was going to read John 8. Because as we talk about this this morning, I, I pray at least next week. Because I think the second part is better than the first. But the first part is necessary. As we talk about walking in the love of God in these last days. The title as the Lord gave me is just keep your rocks in your pocket. We want to ensure that we're walking in line. Walking by faith, yes. But we're walking in the love of God. Because just as Jesus was a vessel, we know he went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, right? That's what you and I are to be doing in the earth. We're to be vessels that are conducive for God and the Lord Jesus and everything they are to a lost and dying humanity. Amen? Amen. Amen. A, a, a minister years ago, been dead a long time, made this statement. His name is J.C. Ryle. No, I don't follow his teachings and doctrine, but I do have numerous ones of his quotes. He said, it would have been well for the church of Christ if the warnings of the gospel had been studied as much as the promises. That's what he said. And it is a fact. Because a lot of things that are catching Christians off guard and bringing them to a place of shock, laid all out in the Word of God. Everything that's happened is just the Bible being fulfilled. Amen. He said it would have been well for the church of Christ if the warnings of the gospel had been studied as much as his promises. Maybe we wouldn't be so caught so off, off guard, right? Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. 
You have to stay focused on the task at hand. Romans 5.5. 5. You have to stay focused on what God's called you to do. You follow anybody that's successful, the Word and Jesus first, but any minister, any Christian that's successful, they don't allow what other people do or don't do determine who they are. That's not what they do. If you're going to accomplish the will of God for your life, your allegiance is going to have to be to God. Amen? Amen? I've had people about preachers say, well, I believe in church, or I believe this, that, or the other, until so-and-so fell. You had too much faith in the wrong people. Amen. You follow me as your pastor as I follow the Lord. If it's not in line with the Word, you should reject it. Amen. Right? <clears throat> Romans 5, verse 5, talking about the love of God. Romans 5, 5 says... Hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost given to us. We're loved children of the love of God. And the moment you got saved, the Holy Ghost shed the love of God abroad in your heart. So is there such a thing as a Christian that doesn't possess love? No. They might be dormant. They might not be walking in it. But they do possess it. Amen? John 14. You say, well, I know so and so and he's out of love. And so are you. Every person that says so and so's out of love and they're wrong here and you're just in a basic relationship, not in a position of authority, you're out of love. Because love bears up under all things. And what that means is, is it covers in silence. A person that's going around talking about another person's sins is not in the love of God, ever. I said, ever. The Lord told me before, and it was to help other people. Of course it helped me. But he said, when you talk about people's past, like a lot of people do, talk about what somebody did back yonder, and they have repented, and they've been washed in the blood, he said, I want you to understand you're guilty of false accusation. He said, you're guilty of false accusation. Because that person is no more. They've been washed in the blood, I forgave them, and who are you to bring it back up? That's what the Lord said. It's in line with the Bible, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. He forgives our iniquities, our sins. But we look at John chapter 14, verse 21. He that hath my commandments and does what? Keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So can we follow the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, now we're not, we're not obeying the word because we're in fear of going to hell. We're already children of God. We obey the word because we love God. Because we love Jesus. Do you believe you can follow him? Well, as we just looked, we saw how he handled this woman. Called him the act of adultery. I, I wonder today when other people sin and miss it. Do we handle things like Jesus did? John chapter 13. You're going to talk about it anyways. John 13, 34, and 35. Now we know these and many get excited about it, but you, you may be less excited when you get over into what love is. Because the Bible is the instruction book for Christian living. I've said this before and I hold fast to it. I think a lot of people, if they didn't have other people to talk about, they wouldn't have nothing to say. That's popular today. If they didn't have other people to talk about, say, hey, did you hear what so-and-so did? I'm thinking, my God, what are you doing? That's none of my business nor yours. Right? John 13, 34, if you say, well, I, 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 I'm not sure I want to I want to hear this. Well, you, you, want, you want all those answers. You want to receive all those answers by faith, right? You've got to have your heart right. John 13, 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. The Bible says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. And we see these things going on. Now we are we as Christians, 
are fully aware that we possess the love of God and we're to walk in the love of God. But I want you to see what's been going on. Matthew 24. There are things that are happening, have been happening, and will continue to happen until you and I are raptured out of here or until you die and go to heaven. And you must be prepared for it. You cannot let what's been going on in the earth harden, harden you to the things of God. And I'll just be honest, as a person, not just a pastor, the things that are said and done now by Christians that used to walk with God absolutely blows my mind. I, I, don't, I don't even know how to respond. Sometimes I'm not walking in love. I'm just shocked. It's still true in the Bible that the Christian is supposed to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Amen. Yeah. It's still true that my life is my testimony. We looked at it in, over in Matthew 12 a week or so ago. Well, I'll be judged one or the other by the words that I speak out of my mouth. It matters if my words are idle. They've got this thing now, and I try not to say anything about it. I try to be quiet. But they've got these things going around about the president. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of supposed saved, spirit-filled Christians. Mm -hmm. They either backslid or they've never saved to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I've had Christians to say and tell me, well, this is what we're going to have to do. This is what we're going to have to say. That we need somebody, even like President Trump. We need somebody that talks that way. You do? Is that what you need? How's your life going today? How's things going for you? I'm being honest with you. Let's get at your house. Because you've got a wrong mindset. You say, well, I think President Trump should have been the president. Yeah, he should have been. All that stuff's fine. But four-letter words, degrading women, mocking people, I don't care who it is. That's wrong. I don't care who it is. It's wrong. This thing they're saying now about President Biden, you think he should be the president? My God, I think McKenzie do better than president. Lord, forgive me. And she's 13. But if you think I'm going to go around saying these things, the Bible says pray for your leaders. People say, he's not my president. Well, maybe you should leave and move. Because he is your president. You might not like it. I might not like it. But the Bible's still true. And there's things that are being said by Christians now. I don't even know how to say the things from the pulpit even to reference them. But it's got something to do with a guy's name, Brandon. Yeah. He said, oh, we just need to say that you need to have your tail down here in this altar is what you need. Yeah. I'm a part. People say, I want to I see God move in my family, and I can't figure out why not. You don't have to listen to just a few seconds mm -hmm. to know why he's not moving. Yeah. I want you to understand something. I don't care how much hell is in this world. This Bible has not changed. Yeah. I don't care how many of your Christian brothers and sisters, your friends and family, is going with the devil and his alien crowd. This is still the word. Yeah. It hasn't changed. What was not acceptable 20, 40, 60, 200 years ago is not acceptable today. What was right then is right now. And that has not changed. And the church is going way off over here because of all sorts of things. Well, the only way things are going to be changed is by you and I exercising authority in the name of Jesus and walking by faith. It isn't going to be changed all the way. So I just, I, I think all this stuff's necessary. Again, how's it working for you? How's it working? Because I dare say you got problems in every area of your life because that don't work. It never will work. You say you got to be informed. Informed of what? Informed of what? How do you change things because you know more evil than I do? You know more about how messed up things than I do. Messed up things are. How does that change anything? A lot of people would have been better off if they had dropped out of school in the eighth grade than if they had went through on the college. If they'd been indoctrinated so much foolishness. So you've got to be a thinker for yourself. My mind belongs to Christ. Amen. Maybe yours needs to. Amen. Amen. Amen? See, why are you preaching this way? Because we believe in God for things. The Holy Ghost says it's never going to happen if we don't obey the Word of God. Amen. It ain't going to happen. Amen. There's no good way to say it. We've got to get back to God's Word. This is His way no matter what happens outside there. 
I don't care what you and I've done this for years and I'm going to keep doing it. I love everybody, but I want you to understand something. That's the way I'm going. I don't care who goes another way. I love them, but they can go to California or Timbuktu. That's the way I'm going. Yeah. And for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. I'm not going to hate them, but I'm not going to follow them either. Yeah. That's the way we're going. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Which way are you going? You got your mind made up? Not just on Sunday morning. Yeah. Every day, right? Yeah. Look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, we're in these times. We need to understand this. They're asking Jesus about the times and the scenes. I know. Talking about when he comes to set his kingdom up on the earth. But as we get closer to the end of time, it is a fact and a reality that things are going to get worse. Amen. 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 We should not be shocked by these things. The only reason many people shock is because they're so consumed with everything that's going on in the world, they're not in the Word. So they're the shock. Right? Jesus said, he answered them, Take heed that no man deceive you. One of the things that's going to take place repeatedly is deception is going to increase. Many's going to come by name saying, uh, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. Nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and divers are many places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 10, we see this everywhere. It's all marked up in my Bible, and I've got over to the side of it. This is the process of offense. Men, then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. How does somebody that loved you end up hating you? They got offended, and they didn't deal with it. And then that offense... It turned into betray or being a traitor. It turned into betrayal. And then the very person that said they loved you, it could happen to you too if you're allowed to, then they will hate you. Yeah. Right? And we see these things regularly. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Verse 10. I need to back up. Amplified. Many will be offended. This is amplified in verse 10. It will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert. That's part of the definition of, of, of offend. To distrust and desert him whom they ought to trust and obey. And will stumble and fall away and betray one another in, and pursue one another with hatred. You don't see that going on, do you? NLT says in verse 10, many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. You see these things all the time. It's taking place right now because of what they see going on around them. You cannot allow what's going on around you to cause you to disobey the God of love who lives within you. Amen. Right? Yeah. Go down a little further. Verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound. This is what God has instructed me to warn you about. He's warned me about for years now. He said, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of men. You say, well, I've got love. Yeah, you've got the love of God shed abroad in your heart as a Christian, but it can be dormant. Love is not a feeling. It's a decision of the will. Exercising your will. Right? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Message Bible of that verse says, for many others, the overwhelming spread of evil you see that going on? The overwhelming spread of evil will do the men. Nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. That's Matthew 24, 12, the message Bible. NLT says, sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold as a result. The Passion Translation of 12 says, there will be such an increase in sin. And lawlessness. You don't see these things happening, right? Yeah. That those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. You must understand if you allow it to, life and other people will cause you to grow cold in your walk with God and your love towards other people. It will happen. You see people, and if you're not careful, you'll do it yourself. If you don't stay on top of this, you'll find yourself getting hardened. You will. And you'll even hear Christians talk about sometimes, well, my God, evil and the devil is just going to take over. That's not our language. 
Our language is not just one of love. Our language is one of faith. My house will stand. We'll walk in the love of God. We'll walk in the peace of God. My children are going to be blessed. You say, I just don't know about my children and my grandchildren being raised. We're raising warriors. We're raising up a great, mighty, exceeding army through the word and the spirit of God. My children, if you do it God's way, your children, my grandchildren when we have them, your grandchildren, they're going to do a great, mighty work against the kingdom of darkness that the Lord carries and a great, mighty work for the kingdom of God. We're equipping them for battle. That's what's happened to the church. It's become a playpen. And a social event. Yes. And that's where people go now. Is where they got the best coffee and donuts. Mm -hmm. That's what we need right now. There's a better donut shop and coffee shop in the church. So I just like the way you better get what you need. Yes. You better get equipped. Yes. <coughs> you better be prepared. Because yes. this mentality that a lot of people's had for years. This has been bad. And we can just wait it out. That's unbiblical. Yes. That is not true. To the day you leave this earth and me, it is not doubt and unbelief. It is not speaking negativity. The world system, whom Satan is the God of, is going to get worse and worse and worse Amen. and worse. And if I said it a thousand times, still be true until the day you leave here. Amen. So you better prepare your kids. You better. You say, well, I got to all, do all this other stuff. You're going to wish you fed them on the word. Amen. Pray with them. Yeah. Let them in the right direction. All the rest of that stuff ain't going to matter anyway. It was the devil that wasn't God, but you should have got a revelation of that when the coronavirus came. You found out a lot of stuff wasn't part to begin with. But a lot of people went right back to what they were doing, so that's between you and God, right? Feed them on the Word. Don't allow life and other people to cause you to grow cold in your walk with God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. We're going to obey God. We're not going to be lukewarm Christians. We're not going to back down and be pushed around. I'm not talking about other people. I'm talking about being pushed around by the devil. That's right. Not going to be in fear. I'm going to come back and go over all these. I don't have time to do it today. But, but if you looked at this, you would see, number one, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says, Know this, this also know, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amplified says, hard, difficult times will set in. Set in like a rain that comes and sets in. You want to preserve it on the end. The answer is no until we're raptured out of here and then we know the process of time. Of course, Jesus is going to come back, right everything that's wrong, and set his kingdom up and all sorts of things, send the devil straight to hell where he belongs, right? But we're going to have these times that we have to live in now. What are you going to do? Well, we haven't gotten to that part, but the reality of it is we walk by faith and walk in love and not allow the outside to determine who's on the inside, right? We live from the inside out. You say, I was serving God until so-and-so did something. No, you wasn't serving God. You thought you were. Mm -hmm. You were just chugging along, doing whatever. When you're serving God and He is your allegiance, you don't get moved by what other people say. Mm -hmm. People say stuff. You know, I've had people say things about me that I wouldn't even say from the pulpit. All kind of stuff. But I, I've gone to God about it, not having a pity party. I said, God, you don't understand all these things. This isn't right. He said, you said you want to walk like me. He said, you said you're supposed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus like the Bible. He said, you know, they said not only many things about Jesus, that, and they crucified him as well, but one of the things they said about Jesus was he was of the devil. Mm -hmm. He cast out the devil and devils in the name of devils. They called Jesus demon possessed. So when they talk about you and say all manner of evil against you, we'll close on this and come back to this next week. Matthew chapter 5. We'll leave you with this passage because it's the first time agape, the God kind of love, was mentioned in the New Testament. You're going to have to know Matthew 5, 43 through 48. You're going to have to know 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, but 1 through 8, and all of this good. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, the Amplified says, Love never fails. Whatever you apply, the love of God to will not fail. You say, Well, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. This person, though, your heart's right. Is what you have to take care of. You can't control other people, right? That's another message, and we're going to get there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 said, You've heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you. Which means despitefully use you means to insult you. To slander your name. 
to falsely accuse you. Amen? Amen? That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, <clears throat> sendeth rain on the just, the unjust. For if you love them which love you, people talk about their family all the time, how much they love your family. Well, Jesus said, if you love them which love you, what have reward, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. You don't gauge whether you walk in the love of God, whether you love your children or not. Now you, you can understand, you can walk in the love of God, you can love them that way and you should. We should walk in agape love in, in every which way. But the reality of it is, you gauge the love of God by the way you treat your enemy. Right? If you salute your brother only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publican so be ye therefore perfect or mature, even as your Father which is in heaven be perfect. I ask God, how can you do that? How do you even do those things? Now this is actually the last scripture. Lord, forgive me. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. I told you that would be the last one, but these two go together, and it would do you great benefit to write 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23 right there in your Bible in Matthew 5. We could, we could see all of this and it'd be fine. But Jesus was innocent, but I just want to read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. We know anything happened to Jesus. He didn't deserve it. He took it for you and me, right? But when he was reviled, talking about Jesus, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. How did Jesus walk in the, you say, well, he was loved, yeah. But how did he walk in the love of God? I asked the Lord this question and he gave me this scripture by the Holy Ghost. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't return evil for evil. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Your commitment to God can be seen in the degree you walk in the love of God. He said, they say this, that, or the other. Answer my word. <clears throat> let go and let God. Many people, the Lord told me, this was here. He said, many people say, this is my past. This is who I was. This is what I did, or this is what somebody did to me. And then this bears repeating today because the Lord told me to say this. But he said, they always say, this was my past. And he said, if you're still talking about it, it's not your past. It's today. It's your present. It's not your past. I might sound good and sound real cute, but it's not. It's occupying a space that it should not be occupying today. Don't talk about it anymore. You remember, everything you talk about, you're feeding something. What are you feeding? That's why you feed on the Word daily, right? Because what you put in is what's going to come out. Amen? Do you believe the Word works? Yes. You're not going to allow your heart to be hardened. You don't keep your rocks in your pocket. He said, well, that's what I, 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 I oh, we got to come back. We got to come back. We need to go two more hours to keep this, this one by us this morning. Well, we got the fall festival. We could just go to the fall festival and y'all could eat and we'd be good. <laughs> he said, that means I never stand up for truth. I stand up for truth, but I don't attack anybody. People say, oh, you can ask my family. That's why it's hard sometimes, and I don't mean this in the wrong way. It's hard sometimes for, for me to keep my family in love. Because people say, Pastor Jason, don't walk in love. I say, they know me. They know and you get my family highly upset. Because my family knows the truth. They know all the things that said and done. And Pastor Jason just keeps running away. I never acknowledge it. I keep doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. You say, if they said this, that, and the other, I'll just grin and keep on. And wake up in the morning, study and pray, and do what I'm supposed to do. You say, where'd you get that from? Number one, the Bible. But Dr. Hagen, they wrote a book about Dr. Hagen on the front of the book. Isn't that right? On the front of the book, they had a snake's, mouth, a snake's tongue coming out of his mouth. You say, what did he say or do about it? He'd get a lawsuit. Never mentioned it. He's getting on board. They actually said you had to arrived at a good place until they started writing books about you. <laughs> they haven't written no books about me yet. I got people that don't like me. But still, you just keep walking in the love of God. You say you never speak the truth to anybody. You don't deal with things yet. You've got to deal. But the Bible says in Matthew, is it 18 or 15? 15, 15, 18. <clears throat> One of, he said, if, if you have a problem with somebody, I'm letting you go. He said, we don't address things. If I have an issue with Carlos, or he says or does something to me, or, or vice versa, we'll just say he says something to me. The Bible tells me I need to go talk to Carlos. Mm -hmm. That's who I talk to. I don't go talk to Jay about what Carlos did. Right. The Bible says you go to them. If I go to Carlos, because me and him are brothers in the Lord, and the goal, if our hearts are right, we're going to be able to work it out. Both our hearts got to be right. But I'm saying, Carlos, man, you said this the other day, and this is, I could be totally wrong, but is there something there? Something, is is something, something going on? Does it bother me when you said that? 
And then we may be able to address a problem. He may say, well, Pastor, I did not know. I, I, I didn't mean nothing about that. Whatever. Me and him's good and we're going on. Now, I address things, but the Bible tells you how to do it. Right? You, if I have an issue with Carlos, I don't go to Jay. That's sin. Even if Carlos did something blatantly wrong to me, if I go to Jay, that's sin. If I go to Billy about it, that's sin. If I go to Uncle Charles about it, that's sin. That's wrong. Don't talk to everybody else about things. So I'm going to stand up and speak the truth. Be respectful, walk in love, and do things God's way. We won't have the problems we've got. Amen? Stand your feet. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We love you and thank you for this day and many blessings you hand upon us. Your spirit leading and guide us. Thank you for all that you said and all that you've done. Thank you, Father. We refuse to allow circumstances, situations, people, the current environment in this world to harden our hearts towards you. We're going to yield to you, listen to you, and obey you regardless of what anybody else says or does. We're going to be like Paul and be able to say, our conscience, our heart, is void of offense toward God and man. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. You're so good and your mercy endures forever. You're so good and your mercy endures forever. You're so good. This has been on my heart since I got here. The Lord didn't tell me to preach it, but I'm going to say it anyways. This not only works in your marriage, you better start working it. Because if you don't, you're not going to have a marriage anymore. You can self-destruct by yielding to the flesh and disobeying God. Everything you say and do. The Bible says, talking about Abraham, he calleth those sons and be known as though they were, who again so believed in hope. But he gave glory to God. He spoke the promise. He spoke the answer. He spoke the solution. That gives glory to God. Who does it glorify when you speak doubt? When you speak defeat? When you speak criticism, well, it glorifies the devil. And you side in with him, and you can destroy your own family by disobeying God's direction in his word. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name that they're going to leave and apply and obey everything they've heard. We're going to examine ourselves in light of the word and be led by the Spirit of God. And go out into this dark, lost, and dying world and be the vessels you've called us to be. And lives will be changed because of the greater one that lives inside of us. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're hearing you say, Pastor, I don't know this Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life. That's where it all starts. The Word of God says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Oh, that God raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Whoever calls upon his name will be saved. There is still a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You still will take your last breath upon this earth and spend eternity in one or the other. You need to have what we call no-so salvation. Make Jesus Lord of your life. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, yes, that's me. I want you to pray with me to make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm ready this day. Slip your hand up boldly. Be glad to pray with you. Anybody in the place, number two, you say, I know I'm a Christian. I have no doubt. But I've got a fellowship with him today. I want to rededicate my heart and life to God. First John 1, 9 says, if I confess that I've sinned, faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me of my sins and all unrighteousness. Other way, in other words, God's way is the right way. My way is the wrong way. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. And just like that, forgiving, cleansed, washed in the blood you're here today, you me to pray with you to rededicate your life to God. So if you hand up boldly, I'd be glad to pray with you. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name. You're so good and your mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Anybody got any special needs, you can come down now and we'd be glad to pray with you. Mr. Mickey, how's Miss Francis? One is, yeah, no one is with her. It was Continue to remember Miss Francis. She did not have a heart attack, but she is in the hospital still, right? So we need to continue to remember her. Uh, we are going on Wednesday night. We got the fall festival today. Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about the infill of the Holy Spirit and giving examples, and you can be filled or refilled or whatever. But the Lord told me to do that. So we're going to do it. So come expect it, ready to go. God is with us. We love you. We appreciate you. Did you get anything? Yes. yes. You're dismissed.